Namaste. In this video, I'm going to share with you a very effective sequence of therapeutic yoga postures that will powerfully work to rebalance and reharmonize your low back. In my work as a massage therapist, one of the most common complaints that I hear from my clients is that of low back pain and or some degree of discomfort. There are several types of low back pain, all of which have different causes. Before the practice, I'm going to comment on the three types of low back pain, starting with the most common. The most common type of low back pain is that type which is caused by too much sitting and not enough moving around. And I call this type the commuter computer syndrome. This lifestyle causes a stagnation of blood, lymph, and chi all around the pelvic area. And left unchecked, this can and will balloon into full-blown pain. Another key factor, which is extremely common and applies to all of the types of low back pain, is an imbalance or asymmetry in the muscular tone of certain key muscles in the um, hips, uh, and pelvis. This sequence is all about correcting that and restoring the integrity and harmony of the entire uh, pelvic and low back region so all of these parts are working together as a synchrony or a symphony. This sequence targets the hamstrings, the quadriceps, the deep lateral hip rotators, and the deep hip flexors, specifically a muscle known as the iliopsoas. If the tone or the relative strength of the two sides of the iliopsoas is off, it can create some degree of twist or torsion in the pelvis. And if that is left unchecked, it can cause pain. Also, the deep rotators of the hips, both the internal and the external, are often involved in low back pain and they need to be in balance with each other. This sequence can and will remedy all of that if you practice. What I've just mentioned is the most common low back pain scenario and so if that is you then go ahead and advance the video if you prefer to the practice sequence and I'll have the timestamp um, up here somewhere maybe even on my face. Um, otherwise I'm going to comment briefly on the other types of low back pain and then you can decide whether this sequence is appropriate for you or not. Um, another cause of low back pain is injury. If you have injured your back either by an accident or a fall or the lifting twisting combo then you will be best served by consulting your doctor particularly if you are in doubt as if you are ready for a, uh, the stretching part of your rehab. However, if you are even watching a video such as this one, chances are you might be ready. But if you are in doubt, please consult with your uh, primary health care provider. The next common cause of low back pain is an imbalance that's caused by some degree of overweight or the body type known as the beer belly. If you have a large or protruding belly, chances are your abdominal muscles have gotten weak and your, the muscles of your back are overworking to compensate. The muscles of your back can be overworking to the point of strain, and this can cause pain and inflammation in your low back, stressing the vertebra and even putting the intervertebral discs in danger. If this is your scenario, you can prevent or even remedy ruptured disc by being proactive now to get your body back into balance the way that nature intended. Abdominal muscles are like a four-ply tire, and these layers of muscle provide structural support to your spinal column from the front. So if your abs are weak, your body will compensate by overworking the back muscles in order just to keep the spinal column erect. As a result, your back muscles will strain and you will feel pain. The pain in this case is caused by an imbalance, and not that there is anything wrong with you. The wonderful thing about imbalances is they can be brought into balance. If you have this type of low back pain, your program will likely need to include some form of dynamic exercise in addition to dietary adjustments. 
This topic is so vast, it is beyond the scope of this video, but I mention it here because it is a common cause of low back pain. The postures in this sequence can help, but if you have this type of pain, you will require additional practices to get back into balance. As far as dietary adjustments, the best place to start is always the simple removal of toxic substances such as processed foods, foods with artificial additives, especially those foods that are high in high fructose corn syrup, GMOs, etc. And again, it's always good to consult with your practitioner if you are in doubt as to the appropriate action to take on your own. So thank you so much for watching. We're going to get into the practice portion of this video. Namaste. Okay, here we go. So this practice is going to consist of a chorus and some verses, okay? I'm going to take us through, I'm going to explain it first, and then we'll do the practice in real time. So first of all, it's going to be a chorus or an intro. And this movement is specifically to balance the psoas muscles. And these are deep hip flexors, okay? So they're in the front. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring our legs up and we're going to pull. So I'm going to be pulling one leg as I simultaneously push the other. This is an isometric movement. Okay, so I'm pulling on my right knee and I'm pushing on my left. I can feel my psoas um, on the left activate. This is to oppose that movement. And now I'm going to switch. So now I'm going to pull on the left and I'm going to push on the right. And so this is going to be the working side for your psoas. And I want you to go back and forth like that. However many times, you know, maybe three, four, five times, and hold each time for five seconds, okay? After you do that, I want you to put your fists, or actually, I'm going to use my yoga block in between my knees, and I'm going to squeeze my knees together. I'm going to squeezing in on the brick, okay? That's going to stabilize it. And now I'm feeling this whole psoas area all nice and activated. So the therapeutic low back sequence consists of um, well, six different movements, and we do them on both sides, so it's going to be 12, okay? There's going to be three straight-legged stretches and three bent-legged stretches. These, you, when you're practicing, you want to hold each of them for um, the, an equal amount of time. So, for instance, when we get to the segment where we're doing the practice in real time, we're going to hold each position one minute. So, it will, the entire practice will take 12 minutes plus however much time this one takes, which we'll do um, before and after. Okay? So, um, so for now, I'm just going to show you the, the positions of the legs. Now, I have a strap. I do recommend that you have a yoga strap or um, a belt or a scarf or a, you know anything that you have lying around the home to stretch with, unless you're super flexible and you can simply grab your big toe, okay, with a straight leg, because these straight-legged poses, like I say, the key word is straight leg. Now my down leg I have against a block. Now I'm just doing that because I don't have a wall right here where I'm filming this. So if you're at home, do it against a wall with your foot against the wall. And that helps to, um, you want to have an impulse of energy into the wall, okay? Feeling your leg begin up at your psoas, because remember, that is going to be your, a secret ticket out of low back pain, is just waking up the psoas so the, uh, so the back doesn't have to work so hard. First, I'm just going to use my strap so I can demonstrate. So we're going to hold this position, and like I said, for our practice, we're going to hold one minute. After one minute, I'm going to take it to the side. So even if you can, well, if you can take it all the way to the floor, you can. But most people are going to be somewhere here or even here. 
which is totally fine. You may choose to get a stack of pillows that you can rest your leg on. And I will show that um, in a moment. Um, so you won't get tired. However, what never needs to stop working is your standing leg. Okay, there's always an impulse way up from the belly into the wall. So we're going to go one minute, one minute to the side, and then we're going to switch hands and we're going to take it one minute over to this side. Now, I don't want you to go all the way into the twist, even if you can. I just you can do that at the very end but the the sequence the therapeutic low back sequence is to hold it right about here so from um, from straight up I'm only going say 45 degrees instead of 90 deviating from the center okay and then we're gonna come down and then we're gonna do the straight leg it's on the other side so again we'll go one minute and it's important that this leg stays all the way straight. This uh, quadricep can be working as I showed in my uh, foot and knee video. And this is gonna come to the side. One minute, keeping your shoulders relaxed. And then it comes to the other side. Okay, so what this is doing anatomically is we're working all the muscles on all the different dimensions of the hip joint. So here we're getting um, this, uh, the hamstring, okay, in the back. Here we're getting the external aspect, the ab, abductors. And here we're getting the internal aspect, which are the adductors or adductors, okay. And then I have to readjust my feet into the wall. Then I want to just rest in the middle and I want to feel my legs internally rotating. I want to feel my thighs rolling in and down toward the ground. Together feel the inner portion of your thigh, inner portion of the knee rolling down. That will create an opening through your sacroiliac, sacroiliac joints, that internal rotation. Okay, those were the three straight-legged positions, three and three, and now we're going to do the bent-legged positions. First one pretty much probably everyone has seen. We're going to cross, and I'm doing my left leg first. It doesn't matter which side you do because even if like one side is your pain side and the other side is your not pain side, well, they work together. They're both involved. So you don't just work the side that's working or the side that's not working. You always do both because the point is, is to get in balance and they are all always working together, okay? So we're going to take that left leg, I'm going to cross the ankle over my knee, keep this knee pressed away, okay? And then we're going to bring this leg up and we're going to hug it into the chest. This is known as the figure four, it has different names. This leg, which is my left hand, the same hand as leg, is going to come through the hole and around the outside. Now if you cannot do this, if you cannot um, hug your knee in like this because these can be very tight the deep lateral hip rotators okay then you can place this foot up against a wall and just hold like this and many people are very happy in this position just pretend that this foot had a wall behind it um, but the key is don't let this knee come in it's going to want to if you're tight believe me it will want to you want to keep it pressed away Okay, and we're going to hug that into the chest. If you're flexible, um, oftentimes the cause of lower back pain is, especially if you have it shooting down the leg, the sciatic nerve pain, well, there's a muscle that's underneath the, the gluteal muscles called the piriformis, and that one is often the culprit in that type of uh, back pain. And this stretch gets it very powerfully, as well as the next one, which we're going to, now we're still working the left leg, but I'm going to take that leg down and now I'm going to turn it in. So we're going to do the internal rotators now. Okay, this foot's going to come over. Now I want a right angle between here and here. Okay, that's a 90 degree angle. This foot is going to come on top of the knee. Now if this movement 
If you feel it on the inside of this knee, you need to get a pillow or a bolster or something and place it underneath your knee to support it, such as um, I'm going to use this block. And you might not be able to go very far. So just be patient with yourself and approach the pose, okay? And then we'll come up. And now the last movement is perhaps the most difficult, and so for that reason I'm going to give a modification if you cannot get into this position at all. And many people can't, especially if you're sitting. But this is the movement that opposes sitting. When you're sitting, your thighs are at a 90 degree angle to your torso. Well here we're going to open that all up, okay? You notice that this knee can stay, can stay straight. Don't stretch it out even if you can because that makes the, the sacrum go on a tilt. You want to keep this knee bent. Okay, if you're very flexible, you can pull this in like this. But for the therapeutic low back sequence, this right here is usually plenty. Okay? So those are the three bent leggeds. I'm going to show you on the other side real quick before we go on. Okay? Ankle crosses over the knee. Open that knee out. Reach under and through the hole and hug that in. Okay? Modification is to have this foot up against this wall that's imaginary in my case, but would be real in your case. Okay? That's bent leg position number one. Bent leg position number two. Now this is my working leg, right? My right leg. I'm going to take that down. We're going to cross this over. And now we're going to drop that right knee down to the midline. But it feels really nice on the sacrum because it puts that uh, thigh head, the femur, in internal rotation. And most people don't get that in normal walking around the world life. You don't find yourself in this position. And so it feels really good. You get a nice flow of chi through that area, uh, nice circulation of lymph that normally isn't able to happen in, um, in this quite this way. Again, if this would be the knee, this one here, that would hurt, if there was a knee that was going to hurt, it would be this one. So in that case, I would take my brick or my pillow or cushion or whatever I have and just lie it under there, give it some support so it's not just hanging there in space. Okay, you'll know. Okay, the third position, we're working with the right leg. I'm going to just tuck that under like that. This leg stays bent. Do not straighten. Even if you can, just keep it bent. If you're super flexible, you can pull it in. Okay, so now if you cannot do this, if you cannot get anywhere near this, because this movement does require a lot of flexibility and openness in your foot, length in the quadriceps, and openness in the um, hip flexors, the hip joints. So if you can't do that, um, or let's just say if you're getting on your way to be able to do that, you can do um, one of my favorite poses, which is the gecko. Okay this lunge that I've been teaching. And so you just come into a lunge here. I'm showing it with a block for support. And this will open that, that, those hip flexors. So now we're ready to do it real time. So I'm going to um, time it for us. But when you're doing this on your own, you'll have to have a timer. And we all know that on our cell phone, we have a timer. Okay, so here we go. We're going to do the full practice. As you see, I've got my iPhone set on the timer function for one minute. So I'm going to be timing each of these positions for us. I have a couple of pillows that I'm going to use to show if um, the version of resting my leg. Okay, I've got my block. And I'm going to set it against my wall. Okay, you might not need a block, um, but you do need something to squeeze your legs together. It could even be a soccer ball if you have one. In fact, that would work really well. Okay, so the first thing is we're going to start stretched out 
with my feet against the wall. And what I want to do is roll my inner thigh down to the floor and try to roll my inner knee down to the floor. And just feel that. That's step one. My neck is long along the floor. And I'm pressing with, I'm trying to find my, the top of my legs, which is way up here, and I'm pressing into the wall from there. And then we're going to do our isometric movement. So we're going to hug the knees in, and then I'm going to push on this left, left leg, and I'm going to pull on the right. I'm going to try to hug my right into my chest, but I'm not, I'm going to resist with my legs. So it's not going to look like it's going anywhere. And so here we go. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm feeling it all here. Then I switch hands, pull and push. So now I'm pushing my right and I'm pulling my left. One, two, three, four, five. Switch, pull and push. One, two, three, four, five. Pull and push. One, two, three, four, five. It's actually better if I use something a little bit wider. So I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna hug this brick. One, two, that's better. So when you're doing this, use either a block or a soccer ball, or a basketball would be fine. One, two, three, four, five. Here we go. So I'm gonna set my timer. Here we go, I'm setting it for one minute, and I'm gonna do my right leg first. So I'm gonna take my strap, and I'm gonna stretch my right leg straight up. Now remember, if you are very stiff, okay, and your leg is not even, you can't get it to 90 degrees, that's fine. That's, you can definitely still do this. What I want you to do is even though this is the straight leg section, you can bend your down leg. Okay, and that'll give you a little bit more, okay? But for those of you who can um, keep your leg at 90, uh, 90 or more, then do it that way. Okay, and then here's where you just close your eyes. You keep a gentle pressure into the wall, keeping this firm. And otherwise you relax. Keep the back of the neck long. And just breathe. See, one minute goes really fast. Here we go, to the side. Now my pillows are here. If I want to rest my leg on the pillows. Some people may, might be way up here. That's fine. Just take it out to the side. The important thing is to take it until you feel it in your adductors. So for me, I need to take mine quite a ways down before I even start to feel it in my adductors. And I keep pressing into this brick, I keep pressing out from that heel. This arm can come out like this, and I'm just gonna rest. Bring my leg back up, and I'm going to cross it over. I'm going to set my timer. And now this one, I want to make sure I'm getting this outer hip, outer side of the hip. The IT band, this is getting what's called the abductors or the abductors. This foot, my down leg keeps pressing into the wall. Again, many people may be up here. That's totally fine. Even if you can take it all the way down, I want you to save that till the very end. I want you to be kind of suspended somewhere in the middle.
And now I'm going to let it go all the way because my timer just went off. And then I'm going to come back to center. And now the other side. Straight leg on the left. And as you hold this, you'll feel your legs start to open. And when that happens, you can draw it in a little bit farther. Or again, if you're uh, stiff, you can bend this knee and work like this. Okay, I'm going to take my cushions over. And I'm starting my timer. I'm going to take my leg out to the side. My cushions are there, so it's I don't have to work quite so hard so I can relax because this is supposed to be a restorative practice so you really shouldn't feel like you're working that hard but it's um, it should feel good it should feel like it's providing relief if you're feeling pain while you're doing this sequence I would not go very far into pain um, You know, if you're feeling pain when you're doing this sequence, then please contact me either by email or make a comment that I can respond to you individually because different people would be feeling different pains for different reasons. But the point of this is to be doing um, simple stretches in a range that is tolerable to you and that will not... Um, trigger your pain while you're doing it. Okay, now we're going to do the um, external side of the leg or the lateral portion of the leg. I'm going to dispense with my strap just because it's easier for me, um, but many people watching this I would assume will need to work with a strap. For me it just feels better if I can actually capture my foot, um, but you have to, again, feel into your own body and what's appropriate and um, working within your range of flexibility. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with working with a strap. In fact, it's an indispensable uh, yoga prop. Um, if you're serious about your yoga practice, then please get a strap. You will, you will not regret it. And then for me, I'm going to just take this all the way over, and then I'm going to bring it up. So yeah, I'm doing the math. So if you did each position for three minutes, I mean, it's a long practice. It's, it's not um, unheard of, even five minutes each position. So you've got three, 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 you got nine, so you get 18 minutes on the straight legged and 18 minutes on the bent. So that's a full practice. And, um, and if you are in low back pain, that might be all that you can really do uh, for your yoga practice. So here we go on the bent legged sequence. So I'm gonna start my timer, one minute. I'm gonna cross my right leg. I'm gonna open that knee out and I'm gonna pull that into the chest. And then I'm just gonna relax. Again, if you're stiff, 
you'll have if they're very very stiff down here then you have this foot against a wall You should not feel this in your knee. If you start feeling this position in your knee, then you need to back off a little bit. You're overdoing. You should be taking it 100% in the deep lateral hip rotators. The only reason you would feel it if, in your knee if you're skipping this down here. If you're not getting that work in the, in the hip, then the knee will take it. Okay, so I didn't set it, so that's going to be a minute. And now we're going to change feet. So we're still working on the right side. Now we're doing the internal rotation. So I'm going to show it with my pillows for support. Now the first thing that's going to happen is I'm going to walk my right foot to the right a little bit. So when I take that knee down, my leg is coming straight out of my hip joint. Okay, it should be coming straight down. I'm going to put these under there. I'm going to pretend like I'm, it's straining my knee, and I've already set the timer. And so here I can just take my arms out. I can put them overhead. I can do anything that I want with my arms that feels good. And you generally don't need the strap for the uh, bent-legged variation. And I'm going to bring my leg up. I'm going to get these out of the way. And now I'm going to take my leg and I'm going to fold it all the way under. This is called Ardha Supta Virasana in Sanskrit. Okay? Um, but I think I'm going to show the gecko for the video because. Um, I have a feeling that a lot of people will be doing that variation. This variation is mainly for people who um, are already very open here. So you will know who you are if you can even get into that position. So, so I'm going to be working with my um, right leg because that's the leg that we've been working on this whole time. So I'm going to set my timer, and I'm going to get my block, and I'm going to come into this. It's, just, it's basically a lunge. Now I've got my hand on the brick. You can't see it. Okay. My other hand is on the floor. If I had two blocks, that would probably be even more comfortable. In fact, I'm going to use this hand for the brick, and I'm going to put this one on my knee. And I'm just lengthening into that front thigh. toes on this down leg are turned out. And see, as I hold this, I, I feel myself, I'm sinking more deeply and more deeply. That's because I'm starting to open up. That's a good thing. That's what we want.
and then coming up. Looks like I forgot to set it again. Now we'll do the other side. So the bent legged on the left. So first we're going to take, I'm going to get my timer and I'm set it for one minute. I'm going to cross my left leg over and I'm going to hug that leg into the chest, keeping this knee open. and I feel it on my own body, I feel it opening up, and as it does so, I can hug it in a little bit closer. And there's my timer, I actually set it this time. And then the other side. So I'm going to grab my pillows. So we're doing the left side, so that means my right heel is going to cross over my left knee. I'm going to walk my left foot to the left. I'm going to take my pillows to the center, and then I'm going to drop that knee down. Internal rotation on the left leg. So again, the, the support is only if you need it. If you don't need support, if your knee is fine, then see if you can take your knee, you know, if it'll go all the way. My knee doesn't go all the way to the floor in internal rotation. Um, yours might. Um, it probably won't though. But I cannot say that for sure. You would have to have um, a predisposition to be extremely open on that internal aspect of the inner groin. But again, this is making space here in the sacroiliac joint. Internal rotation, often people are stuck in external rotation. It's very common. And I'm feeling it on the inside of my hip joint, which is where I want to feel it. I do not want to feel it in the knee. Okay, bringing it up. And now, I'm going to show both versions. If you're flexible and if you can do this without any strain or pain, then please do this version. One minute. Otherwise, it's going to be the gecko, and this left leg is going to be my back leg. So I'm going to have my block over here. I'm going to start my timer, and then I'm going to sink. Okay, my right hand is on my right knee, my left hand is on my block. Now if I need it high, I can work it high. If I want it medium, then it's medium. For me, medium feels really good. Ooh. And then this whole thing starts to open. Okay, that was it. So now we're going to do, we're going to stabilize. So I would love it if you come into Baddha Konasana, 
Now we're going to work the body, the two sides of the body, doing the same thing. This should actually be held for at least one minute. Um, but I didn't set the timer, so I'm just going to take a guess. And now we're going to do that uh, psoas balancing movement. So my knees are just pretty much 90 degrees, and I'm going to push my left and pull my right while I uh, resist with my legs. And then I'm going to switch, pulling my left, pushing my right away, feeling this all activate. One, two, three, four, five, switch. One, two, three, four, five, switch. One, two, three, four, Five switch. One, two, three, four, five. And now taking the block and coming between my knees and just hug that. And now we'll take Shavasana. So just let yourself lie flat. Now, if you can't lie flat because your low back is bothering you, always roll to the right when you're getting up. Then you can take support. Now, if you need more support than this, then please have at it. But this is one of the best ways to support your low back while lying supine is to have the support of pillows. And some people may need bigger, larger humps of pillows. Your Shavasana after that should be at least five minutes, I recommend. It feels really good. You'll be able to feel all this kind of tingling and running as your body is reorganizing itself based on the instructions that you just gave it. And I can feel my body just doing exactly that. It feels really good. Use your Shavasana as time to just tune in. To what your body is, is telling you, to what your body is doing. Wonderful. So we're going to pretend like we went for five minutes, even though we didn't. I'm going to the roll to the right side, which is the best way to get up. Pressing up with my hand. And namaste. Thank you so much. Please comment or have questions. Please comment below or email me. Thank you so much. Namaste. Okay. So as you can see, it's quite a commitment of your time and energy and care to your own rehab of your own low back. The point of this video is, is that it can be done at home. Your body really responds to your attention. And often in these cases of low back pain um, due to neglect of care, just the attention that you're giving your body by taking the time to do those stretches, um, that in and of itself will have a healing effect. But this sequence is designed to get at the cause of your low back pain. It, everything is working together in a balance and a, a synchrony, as I mentioned. So um, I hope you enjoy and also yeah, one minute, two minute, three minute, whatever you can commit to. Um, but do each position for the same amount of time and just make sure that you have a full hour to uh, spend on it if you choose to hold each position for five minutes. That is quite a powerful practice. 
um, but at least on a daily basis, one minute each position, that's 12 minutes a day to rehab your lower back, plus the spacer. And then if you can manage a little bit of the basic warm-up sequence, even just the swing and the tap beforehand, that would be awesome. So thank you so much. Please comment or contact me personally if you would like uh, personal instruction. Namaste.